want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Welcome to PersianPod101.com's Persian in 3 Minutes. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Persian. Salam, man Anita. Az didanet khoshbakhtam. Hi, I'm Anita. Nice to meet you. In this series, you're going to learn basic Persian expressions. It's super easy and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you will learn how to introduce yourself in Persian. There are only two sentences you need to learn. But first, it is important to clarify that in Persian, there is a difference between formal and informal language. First, let's see how Persian people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Salam, man Anita. Az didanet khoshbakhtam. Hi, I'm Anita. Nice to meet you. Salam, man Anita. Az didanet khoshbakhtam. Start by saying salam, which means hi. Then say man, I, your name, and then am, which means to be or am. Salam, man anita am. Persian word order is different than English. Word for word, this literally means hi, I, Anita, am. Finally, Say, Az didanet khoshbakhtam. This means, nice to meet you. Salam, man Anita. Az didanet khoshbakhtam. Now let's look at the same sentence in formal speech. Salam, man Anita hastam. Az didane shoma khoshbakhtam. Hello, I'm Anita. Nice to meet you. Salam, man Anita hastam. Az didane shoma khoshbakhtam. So, what has changed from the informal introduction? Let's take a closer look. The informal man anita am has turned into man anita hastam. In both cases, man stands for I or me. Hastam means am and it's added to the end of the formal introduction instead of just am. Am is actually just the short version of hastam, which is the to be verb conjugated for the first person. Finally, pay attention to how nice to meet you changes. We went from az didanet khoshbakhtam to az didane shoma khoshbakhtam. Here, didanet and didane shoma are different. Didanet is used when speaking informally to only one person. It is formed by adding et, meaning your, to the end of didan, meaning seeing or meeting. In the formal version, instead of et, we add e shoma. Shoma is the formal word for you and can be used whether you're speaking to one person or a group of people. Once again, the informal way to introduce yourself in Persian is salam, man anita, as didanet khoshbakhtam. The formal way to introduce yourself is Salam, man Anita hastam. Az didane shoma khoshbakhtam. Now it's time for Anita's advice. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Persian culture. And if you're not sure whether to use Az didane khoshbakhtam or Az didane shoma khoshbakhtam, you can simply say khoshbakhtam. However, if you use the full correct sentence with Persian people, they're definitely going to be impressed. Do you know how to say thank you in Persian? You'll learn how to say this and many other words in the next lesson. In the last lesson, we learn how to introduce ourselves in Persian. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to use good manners as you thank people. Let's get started. There are several ways to thank someone. The formal way is Kheli Mamnun. Kheli Mamnun. Mamnun means thank you and Kheli means a lot. So kheli mamnun is like saying thank you very much. Kheli mamnun. Now for the informal version. You could remove kheli and just say mamnun. But let me tell you something surprising. In Persian, we usually say merci, which is the French word for thank you. Merci. 
We don't have time to discuss the origins of why we say merci in Persian, but it's an informal and relaxed way to say thanks. How should you respond when someone says thank you? There are basically two different ways to say you're welcome. The first is khahesh mikonam. Khahesh mikonam. Khahesh mikonam literally means please. That's what it means in regular usage. But when used in this way, it is the equivalent of saying you're welcome. The other way to say you're welcome is the expression qabeli nadare. Qabeli nadare. Literally, this phrase means this worth is nothing, or it was nothing, but it has become a common and polite way to respond to someone thanking you. So, when someone says merci to you, you can simply reply with khahesh mikonam, or qabeli nadare. Now it's time for Anita's advice. If merci seems too casual, don't worry too much about it. In Persian, merci can be used with just about anyone, anywhere, and at any time. In the last lesson, we learn how to show gratitude by saying thank you. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Iran. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The most commonly used informal greeting is Salam. Salam. Salam means hi or hello. We use it when we meet someone or enter a room with people in it. We can use it as a greeting almost anywhere. After Salam, we almost always say, how are you, when we greet friends or close relatives. It might seem strange to say it every time, but this is a part of normal everyday conversation in Persian. Let's try out the informal way of saying, hello, how are you? Salam, chetori. Chetori. The I in chetori makes this sentence second person. The formal way becomes slightly longer. Add, hale shoma which means your health. Salam, hale shoma chetore. Hale shoma chetore. Hale shoma chetore literally means how is your health. We use the word shoma, you, instead of saying chetori to make this more formal. Now, if you remember the first lesson, adding et to a word made it informal. Therefore, if you add et to hal, Instead of e shoma, you make the whole sentence informal. Salam, halet chetore. Halet chetore. Notice that there are many ways of saying the same phrase in Persian, making it shorter or longer. But remembering the basic words will help you get through almost any conversation. Literally, salam means hello. We use other phrases too, but we always add salam at the start of a greeting. In the morning, we say, Salam, Sob Bechair. Sob Bechair. Sob is Persian for morning, and Bechair means to be good. So it really means wishing you a good morning. In Persian, we don't say good afternoon or good evening very much. Good morning and good night are used more often. During the rest of the day, the most common greeting is just Salam. Good night is Shab Bechair. Shab Bechair. Notice that we didn't say salam before shab bakhair. That's because we don't say good night when we meet someone. It is only used when leaving. In Persian, there is only one word for saying goodbye, but there is a small difference between the formal and informal versions. Formal, khoda hafez. Khoda hafez. Informal, khoda fez. Khoda fez. Khoda hafez literally means may God protect you, but it is used to say goodbye. Now you have learned many different ways to greet people in Persian. Let's review them all one more time. When meeting friends or relatives, Salam, Chetori. Salam, Halet Chetore. When meeting a stranger, someone older, or someone we don't know well, Salam, Hale Shoma Chetore. To say good morning, Salam, Sob Bechair. To say good night, Shab Bechair. When leaving in a formal situation, when leaving in an informal situation, it's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Anita's advice. In formal situations, Persian people of the same gender commonly greet each other by shaking hands. However, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we hug and kiss each other on both cheeks. 
Don't be afraid to do this with your Persian friends. And don't be shocked when someone from the same gender tries to hug you or kiss your cheeks. It's perfectly normal. Remember that this is only if both people are the same gender. In Persian-speaking countries like Iran, you cannot shake hands or hug and kiss a person from the other gender in public. In the last lesson, we learned several of the most common greetings in Persian. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking in Persian, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're asking, even if their answer is no. Here's the informal and easy way to say it. Ingilisi baladi. Ingilisi baladi. In Persian, balad means can or to be able to. Adding e to the end makes it an informal question. Ingilisi baladi means can you speak or communicate in English? Literally, it's can you English? However, this is only used in very informal situations with close friends. Now we're going to make this sentence more polite by simply adding it to balad instead of e. It becomes a slightly more formal question. Ingilisi baladit. Ingilisi baladit. But it's always a good idea to be as polite as possible when addressing strangers. Here's the most polite form. Aya shoma ingilisi sohbat mikonit? Aya shoma ingilisi sohbat mikonit? Let's pay a close attention to a useful new word here. Aya is a question word used at the start of sentences to turn a regular sentence into a yes or no question. Aya shoma ingilisi sohbat mikonid means do you speak English? By adding bebakhshit or excuse me, the sentence becomes even more polite. Bebakhshit, aya shoma ingilisi sohbat mikonid? Bebakhshit, aya shoma ingilisi sohbat mikonid? If someone replies to you in English, you'll know the answer to your question is yes. But if they answer you in Persian, you might receive one of these responses. Bale. Yes. Bale. Yek kami. A little. Yek kami. Na, man ingilisi sohbat nemikona. No, I cannot speak English. Na, man ingilisi sohbat nemikona. Or, na, man ingilisi balad nista. No, I can't speak English. Na, man ingilisi balad nista. Since this last example is a negative reply to a yes or no question, we need to say na, meaning no, at the beginning of the sentence. We also said nemikona, meaning don't, after the verb sohbat, meaning talk or speak, or nistam, meaning am not after the verb balad, meaning can. Combined with sohbat, meaning talk or speak, now you know that sohbat nemikonam means I don't speak, and sohbat mikonid means you speak. Also, nistam is actually the negative version of hastam, but it looks slightly different in the negative form. Verbs and phrases change depending on the person speaking. Now it's time for Anita's advice. Persian people study the English language at school and love to use English, so most people will understand you if you speak to them in simple English. For those of you whose native language is not English, you can use this same basic question for any language you need. Here are some other language names in Persian. Italiai, for Italian. Rusi, for Russian. Espanyai, for Spanish and Almani for German. In this lesson, we mentioned that the expression Bebachshid means excuse me, but did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson, we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Persian. It's never too late to show your good manners when speaking with Persian people. 
I'll see you in our next Persian in 3 minutes lesson. Badafez! Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Salam Bahamegi. Man Anita Hasta. Hi everybody, I'm Anita. Welcome to PersianPod101.com's Persian in 3 Minutes. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Persian. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase Bebakshid. Aya Shoma Ingilisi Sohbat Mikonid. Excuse me, do you speak English? We use the word Bebakshid, which means excuse me in Persian. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to use Bebakshid and other words when apologizing in Persian. Bebakshid is used in situations like when we are ordering something in a restaurant or asking for something in a store, and so on. For example, ببخشید, یه قهوه لطفا. Excuse me, one coffee please. We can also use it when asking a question. ببخشید, تخت جمشید کجاست? Excuse me, where is Persepolis? Similar to English, there is no informal way to say excuse me in Persian. The meaning is already polite. Persian people just ask questions more directly when speaking to a friend. But to make it polite, you can add lotfan, meaning please, to the start or end of a phrase when asking for something. Lotfan yek kahve midi. Can you give me a coffee, please? We also use bevakhshid in a sentence when apologizing. This can be used both formally and informally. But in a more casual situation, it can also be shortened to bevakhsh, as in, مرا ببخش. Forgive me. مرا ببخش. Please note that the way we say this phrase is different than the way it's actually written. The proper way is من را ببخش. First we have the word man or me. Next we insert را, which is always used grammatically after the object of a verb. In this case, it was me. Finally, we have the command verb ببخش, meaning you forgive. من را ببخش, you forgive me. But you will always hear it as مرا ببخش. Now it's time for Anita's advice. In Persian, just like American English, we usually don't say excuse me when asking for something from a friend. But when we want to ask something or call upon a friend, like hey, do you know? Or, look, what is? Persian people use bebin, which literally means look. It is very common in casual speech. Bebin, takht jamshid kojas. Hey, where is Persepolis? In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Persian, including bebakhshid and lotfan. In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Persian. Yes, numbers. Adad, from 1 to 10. And you are going to learn them in only 3 minutes. Said Are you ready? Let's start. Yek, yek. Do, do. Se, se. Chahar, chahar. Panj, pan. Shish, shish. Haft, haft. Hasht, hasht. No, no. Da, da. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Yek. Do. سه چهار پنج شش هفت هشت نه ده Great job! What is before yek? Do you know? It's سفر 
You don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Persian. Let's try it together. We'll use the phrase Shomareya man, which means my number is. You say the numbers after that, and then finish by saying ast. Shomareya man, ast. Shomareya man, sefr, no, yek, do, se, se, hasht, haft. Chahar, panj, ast. Can you read it by yourself? Shomare man, sefr, no, yek, do, se, se, hasht, haft, char, panj, ast. Perfect. Now it's time for Anita's advice. You can give your phone number like this, but be careful because it's more common to group the numbers in Persian. For example, this phone number would probably be read as 0 912 338 745. This makes them shorter to say and easier to remember. But how do you say numbers above 10? In the next lesson, we're going to learn just that. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Have you forgotten? Here, I'll tell you again. Yek, do, se, chahar, panj, shish, haft, hasht, no, da. And now, let's continue from 11. Yazda, yazda, davazda. Davazda, sizda, sizda, chaharda, chaharda, punzda, punzda, shunzda, shunzda, hivda, hivda, hijda, hijda, nuzda, nuzda. And finally, we have beast. Beast. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Yazda. Davazda. Sizda. Chaharda. Punzda. Shunzda, Hivda, Hijda, Nuzda, Bist. Notice that all these numbers, except 20, have da in the end. These numbers may seem harder to remember, so you really just have to memorize them. Some of them look a lot like their base numbers like charda and chahar, but others you will have to memorize. Luckily, you can get a hint from the similarities of their first letter to their base numbers, like ye in yek and yazda, d in do and davazda, s in sizda and se, and so on. Let's not stop at 20. Counting to 100 is super easy. Now, I'll give you the tens. Si, si, chehel, chehel, panja, panja, shast, shast, haftad, haftad, hashtad, hashtad, navad, navad. Sad, sad. Again, some of these look like their base number, like panja, haftad, or hashtad. But others you could memorize by the similarities of their first letters to their base numbers. The last thing to learn today is how to form compound numbers above 20. This is also super easy. Take the tens and add any number from 1 to 9. 
Then, just put the particle O between them. So, how would you say 56 in Persian? Let's take it step by step. 50 is panja. And then you add the particle O in the middle before adding 6, shesh. Panjo shesh. It's done. Isn't that easy? Let's make some more numbers. 21. Bisto yek. 32. Siodo. 97. Navado haft. 101. Sado yek. 110. Sado da. 131. Sado sio yek. Now it's time for Anita's advice. For numbers up to 100, you just need to memorize 1 through 19 and all the tens. If you remember them well, then you can easily make any number by adding an O between them. For beyond 100, it will be the same. You just need to memorize the hundreds. So when we made 131, we said 100, sad, the particle O, then 30, C, and another O, and finally 1, yek. So what do you think 199 is in Persian? A hundred, sad, ninety, navad, nine, no. So, sado navado no. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to 199 in Persian. In the next lesson, we're going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in Iran? If not, I'll be waiting for you in our next Persian in 3 minutes lesson. Khodafez! In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Persian. I hope you spent some time practicing the numbers, because they will come in handy today. We're going to learn how to go shopping in Iran, or any Persian-speaking country. Before we go, you need to know how to say, how much is it? If you want to know the exact translation, it would be, چقدر است? Chagadr ast. But normally in Iran we use this instead. Chand ast. Chand ast. Are you ready to go shopping in Iran? Let's go. You see something you like and want to ask the shop clerk how much it costs. The first thing to say is Babakshid. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Babakshid. In chand ast. Bebakhshit. In chand ast. We need to ask this question while pointing at something. Asking, how much is this? Or that? That's why we need to add either this or that before chand ast. Since Persian is a gender neutral language, you will only use this or that, as in English. It always agrees between genders. This, in, that, on. How much is this? In chandast. In, chand, ast. How much is that? On chandast. On, chand, ast. Now, if you want to put an object in here, remember that you always put an object or a noun after this and that. For example, if you want to ask for the price of a hat, kola, near you, it would be bebakhshid, in kola chand ast. Excuse me, how much is this hat? Bebakhshid, in kola chand ast. And if it was a bit further, you would say bebakhshid, on kola chand ast. Excuse me, how much is that hat? Bebakhshid. On kola chand ast. At this point, the shop clerk can answer by saying the price. The currency in Iran 
is toman. For example, in sat toman ast. This is a hundred tomans. In sad toman ast. Or he will just simply answer sad toman. Now it's time for Anita's advice. A quicker way to ask how much is chande. So when you ask for a coffee or a kahve at a cafe, you can ask yek kahve lotfan, chande. One coffee, please. How much is it? At this point, can you count tomans in Persian? We are going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I'll be waiting for you in our next Persian in three minutes lesson. Khodafez!